On Wednesday, July 28, 2021, in LaPorte, Indiana, Randy Allen's life was taken by his wife, Thessalonica Allen. Murdering the person you vow to protect in itself is an act that only a vile, bottom-of-the-barrel human being can do. Forget the violation of trust. The narcissistic ability to take any life is atrocious and, frankly, downright demonic. Thessalonica didn't stop there. She upped it a level by being so soulless and empty-headed that she drug her children into the crime, without a doubt traumatizing them for life. Randy Allen is a victim of a senseless act, and this is his story. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mercedes, and I am the rabbit hole diver. The day after Randy Allen was sadistically murdered, Thursday, July 29th, police received a call from a male named Rory, who lived in Michigan. He told police he wanted to report a murder that happened in LaPorte, Indiana. Detectives contacted Rory. He then told them that the evening before he was at his ex's Thessalonica Allen's home, he explained that they shared a child together, and she told him earlier that day her current husband, Randy Allen, was beating on her and their child. She asked him to go over there. When he arrived at the apartment, she walked him over to the closet where Randy Allen's body lied. Rory said he knew it was Randy's body because Thessalonica told him. She asked him to help her move Randy's body into the vehicle. He refused and asked her to take him back to Michigan. On the drive back to Michigan, Thessalonica told Rory the reason she shot him was because he was beating on her and the children. Rory said he talked to the children and they mentioned hearing a loud bang in the house while the two were arguing in the bedroom. Rory continued and told police that he had the gun with him. After Thessalonica dropped him off, she threw the gun out the window and he kept it. He said this all happened around 2 a.m. After the call with Rory, detectives began to look into Thessalonica. They set up outside of her apartment and began to see what was up. She was not able to be located at work or any common places she frequented. Eventually, she was located in the parking lot of a hardware store. As police approached her, she immediately began to cry and said, You guys don't understand. He beats me. In the police interview, Thessalonica confessed. She stated she shot her husband Randy Allen because of a physical altercation they had. She said that they began to argue when she got home that day because the kids told her that Randy was beating on them. She confronted him. She explained that Randy grabbed her by the neck, causing her not to be able to breathe. He then let her go and began to walk away when suddenly he lunged back at her and she pulled the gun she was carrying on her and shot him once. Thessalonica then told detectives Randy's body was actually still in the closet in her daughter's room. A search warrant was executed for the home. A deceased dismembered body was located inside one of the kids' rooms. Randy's body was shoved into a tote bag. They also found an axe and a knife with a blood-like substance. After police found Randy's dismembered body inside of the apartment, a second interview was conducted with Thessalonica. She admitted to cutting Randy's arms off in order to fit him inside the tote bag. She said she panicked and stated she used an axe to do it. Detectives continued on and spoke to the children since they were present during the altercation and after the fact. The kids stated that the day before their mother arrived home, Randy was helping them with homework when he came across a website on their computer that their mother, his wife, was visiting. When she got home, Randy confronted her about the website and they began to argue. The kids said they both went into their room and they could hear them arguing verbally when suddenly they heard a loud bang. It caused them to run into the bedroom where they saw Randy on the floor asking them to call 911. That's when the children stated their mother told them not to and sent them to their room. The children also stated that before they heard the loud bang, they also heard Randy saying he was going to grab his things and leave. Later that night, the children say they were awoken by their mother, asking them to help her move Randy's body into the vehicle. After several attempts, they could not do so because the body was too heavy. The next morning, they saw Thessalonica come home with cleaning supplies and an axe. She then asked them to help her again, drag the body back into the bedroom. That night, they were woken up again by their mom, asking them to help stuff Randy's dismembered body into a tote bag. 
One of the kids stated they saw Randy's legs were cut off. Then they noticed that their mother was carrying a plastic bag holding Randy's legs. Their mother pulled the car all the way up to the front door and had them try and load Randy's body in using the tote bag. They could not do so because it was still too heavy. They said their mom had plans to drive to the South Bend with the body and set the car on fire. Detectives asked them if they normally saw their mother carry a gun on her hip. They revealed that their mother usually carried the gun inside of her purse or in the vehicle. They also mentioned that throughout that night, Thessalonica would wake them up consistently to help her clean the blood, as well as boil water to use on the carpet. Police found several handwritten checklists that Thessalonica put together after murdering her husband. The first note read, 1. Get drugs from friend. 2. Get Ziploc bags. 3. When Randy is in shower, get pawn tickets out of wallet. 4. Put gun, drugs, and car under seat while in car. 5. Call Hearthside and tell them Randy had drugs in the car. Sounds like she was trying to set Randy up and make it seem like he disappeared or something happened to him that was drug related. The second note read, one, spray shit in face, hit him in right knee with hammer. Two, hit with hammer, stab him. Three, roll body up in sheets and plastic bags. Four, pick up Jay, no phones. Jay follows me to LP. Put body in Lincoln with his boost phone. Leave Jay car here. Five, take my keys and his car key off the ring. The above notes were found under the pillow in her daughter's room at the time of the search warrant. The third note read, go to SB. Jay, follow me back to Laporte. Put body in Lincoln. Drive to SB, which is South Bay. Leave body in car while running. Jay brings me back to Laporte while doing this on Compt doing ATI. Thessalonica was clearly aware that she committed a crime and that what she did was wrong. So I don't, and I'm hoping that she doesn't try to pull the insanity card because if she was really insane, she wouldn't have taken the time to try and cover her tracks after the fact. The autopsy report for Randy Allen showed he had a gun wound to the right arm re-entering the right side of his chest. It entered his spinal cord area, which the doctor concluded he most likely was not able to move after being shot, leading him to bleed out. His body was dismembered with both legs and left arm amputated. Domestic violence is not a one-way street that only women go down. It happens to men too. Of course, we hear less of it because society still shuns them for speaking up. It sounds like Randy Allen was trying to do the right thing when faced with an aggressive partner. He was trying to leave. Thessalonica felt entitled to Randy and his time, even if she was wasting it. We can only speculate on what the website was that she was on that caused Randy to become upset. Thessalonica had no emotional self-control and snapped, killing Randy. We can learn from this tragic story. Don't allow the red flags to pile on in hopes of someone changing for you or because we are afraid to be alone, even if it is a marriage. No one deserves to die this way. We cannot forget the other casualties in this crime, the children, they will be emotionally traumatized and scarred for life thanks to their own mother. We can only pray the children heal and send love their way, as well as to Randy's family. Thank you for watching and keeping Randy's story alive. This is all done in hopes to help others in similar situations. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this, I'll be covering cases and really anything that requires more digging. Go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, rabbit hole divers, stay safe.